Hello, Unlocked listeners. This is your fearless vacation rental marketing leader, Matt Landau. That is a phrase I used to use to introduce myself back in the day until uh, upon signing all my emails, sincerely, FML, somebody told me that I needed to Google that phrase. And that's when I stopped using the acronym FML. If you've never heard of it, you should Google it yourself. This is a special podcast episode because we're getting ready for the new season. We're also in the midst of a historic pandemic of a generation that is absolutely insane on every different level. And I can't handle it alone. In this season, on our podcast, I've decided to bring in the production crew who has almost always historically been behind the scenes. And today, uh, both in giving you a little bit of a teaser of what's coming for this season and also going through some of the current events, the things that are um, we're thinking about on the vacation rental front, uh, I've brought in my bestest friend, my most reliable artistic muse, Stuart Hooper. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's it going? You ever, heard, you ever heard an introduction like that? No, no. That was amazing. I've been called many things, but none so nice. <laughs> we'll do that at all uh, casual parties from now on. Perfect. Uh, where are you, Stu? I am in Panama, uh, the country, not the spring break destination. And uh, I'm in a very small town area on the beach about five hours outside of Panama City. And my guess is that you are inside a house that you built. Yes, I am in a house that I, was, uh, that I built and that uh, was supposed to become a vacation rental. But at the moment, it is um, simply a bunker for the end of the world, and it's doing very well <laughs> in that role. <laughs> We're very lucky. And it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. For those yeah. who don't um, know Stu or uh, his home named Mango Fish, what is it? Mangofish.net? Is that right? Uh, actually, we're transitioning over to Mangofish.studio. And now that we're mentioning it in the podcast, I will have to finish it before this goes live. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know Mangofish, uh, a very limited edition name for a very limited edition home, it's in the middle of the rural countryside of Panama. It's on a, basically a cliff that overlooks a gorgeous beach. Uh, and it's fairly sustainable, right? You've got your own uh, generator. Sounded like you were <laughs> handling those issues this morning. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, I mean, we're trying to be completely solar. We have our own well water, and eventually we want to start growing some food. But this uh, global shutdown hit us a little bit ahead of all our preparations. So I've got some solar power, some generator. Uh, I still need the generator for the water because I've been having some issues with solar well pumps, blah, blah, blah. So Oh, solar well pumps are the worst. Uh, then the generator blew up, so we just managed to get a new one. <laughs> it's been it's been a challenge, uh, but it does make me think about uh, where I'd like to be because we've got room to walk around. We've got our own power and water for the most part, and we can think about even supplying our own food in the future. So this whole situation is making me think about how lucky we are to have this place and what we should really be doing with it. I feel you. Even simple things like, in my case, uh, sitting down for dinner with my family, um, reminding ourselves how fortunate we are, definitely has that that effect uh, on us. And and Stu, you said you mentioned vacation rental there, uh, and my guess is that Mango Fish will evolve into a vacation rental uh, after the crisis subsides. Um, but share with folks your role in my life. <laughs> well, um, I produce your various uh, media concerns, uh, including this podcast. They are concerning. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> and the, uh, the show, um, the Vacation Rental Show. Uh, we've actually been making videos together for a long time, but a few years ago, we got more serious about you know, vacation rental stuff with you, VRMB stuff with you. And uh, we've basically been on the road together for almost the last three years straight up until December 2019, uh, working on all these projects. And now we're doing it remotely. So 
Would you, would you say it's fair that you have acquired a lot of vacation rental wisdom from all of our strange travels? Absolutely. I, I like to think of uh, our show as basically a masterclass for us on the best uh, vacation rental hosts in the world. We've seen everything from the biggest to the smallest, to the most limited edition to corporate stuff and some really, really great hosts. Uh, I think almost all of them inner circle members uh, doing some really, really cool things out there in the vacation rental world. I remember you described it one time when we were at a conference and you turned to me, this is one of the earlier ones, you were like, these people are like a bunch of mini Warren Buffetts. They're all so smart. It's pretty impressive. They've all come from different walks of life. They've all kind of fallen into this. And well, up until very recently, they were all, you know, in general, a lot of the people we dealt with were starting to really enjoy the, the fruits of their labor and, and have some really cool businesses uh, that they've built. That's a nice segue. The the moment, this moment in the industry is, of course, unprecedented. It's um, forcing a lot of our colleagues to do a hard reset, which is the theme for this season of the podcast. And you and I were talking about what is the role of a podcast like ours uh, in this kind of recovery period, and we more or less agreed that uh, we can't ignore this topic. Uh, but we also don't want to get um, depressed. We want to stay uplifting. We want the interviews to be fun with interesting people. Um, so we've kind of decided to focus on individuals, both who have achieved great success in our industry, uh, but also up the travel vertical, names that people are seeing in the headlines, uh, and to give a very human take on how to handle this sort of thing. Uh, in some cases, it'll be crises that the individual has been through previously, uh, whether personal or professional, uh, and also talking about some of the things that keeps us grounded, some of the things that keeps us looking forward and, and activities that we can begin to focus on. Is there anything major that you're looking forward to in this season in, in that regard? Because it's certainly going to be unlike any kind of media project that we've done before. Yeah, I, I really see a couple of specific things that I'm excited about sharing. Uh, one is, I think it'll be sort of cathartic for everyone from, from the smallest vacation rental business to the largest that's listening to hear about how some of the best people in our industry are also facing challenges. I mean, I think everyone's generally aware that this is challenging for everyone, but hearing the specific challenges that um, some of these heroes of our industry are facing, I, I think that'll kind of bring everyone together. It'll be very cathartic. And then on a more positive side, I think there are going to be some great stories coming out of what's happening right now. Some businesses that have figured out how to survive, some that are still renting rooms safely in some bizarre way, somebody that started a new business, uh, somebody that's doing something for their community. I, I look forward to hearing some of those stories to kind of lighten the mood and bring everybody together as well. Yeah, I, I would agree that crisis time uh, really does bring out the extraordinary in people and humans, um, and I'm looking forward to capturing that and, and sticking with our um, the normal string of fun, uh, informative topics that we've always talked about uh, with our guests on the podcast. This is just going to be an unusual season, uh, and I'm really thrilled that we're getting to do it. I know you you follow closely tech, uh, you follow media, film, entertainment. Is there anything that pops out to you as a way in which an industry is sort of changing for better or worse that you think might be an interesting parallel for the vacation rental space? The parallel part is what gets interesting because um, our industry, the, the production industry is very quickly changing in a lot of ways that people think might be for the long term. Uh, there's been a lot of work towards actually, you know, people like us, we're, we're more used to working with tools that allow us to collaborate on content uh, from different places around the world. Uh, but those sorts of things have not been common for Hollywood or for television. And now you have uh, workflows where 
people are in their houses all over the place and they're um, working together to, to get content out. And yeah. I think that people are going to realize that they don't have to necessarily go to the office every day to still get that work done. There's also some really cool technical stuff happening. Um, a recent Star Wars production started using like video game software and screens and real people to do this whole virtual production thing. And now you've got people figuring out how to shoot things in their basement virtually and other places. I mean, there's a lot of cool tech stuff that's going to come of it. I'm trying to get into that stuff and figure it out. I don't exactly know what that means for the vacation rental industry because the bottom line is, you know, hospitality is such a, a person to person experience. Yeah. And now I, I can think about reasons in a place like this, you know, the next pandemic, God forbid, I could see people wanting to rent it or come here to get away from it all, but I, but I don't, I don't have it figured out yet how some of these techie remote workflow things have direct applications for the vacation rental industry. But I'd certainly be curious to hear from anyone that does. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, and I'm thinking, I'm looking right now. Uh, you said that people were getting creative and innovating and filming Star Wars in their basement. I am talking into a frisbee that has been cut out. And uh, has a pair of pink underwear stretched around it. This is a pop filter that I created after you told me that my uh, my my voice was popping. Are you <laughs> proud? I'm very proud. Yes. So let's let's jump into a couple of things that we've been observing right now because I think uh, waiting too much time to publish a podcast episode. It, it feels like it. it's a, an eternity these days. It feels like you're missing important uh, subject matter. I wanted to start with travelers. Um, nobody's traveling. That's pretty much <laughs> the theme there. Uh, but what about when people return? Are, what, what sense are you getting both as a traveler and just a business person in terms of what we can expect as small hospitality businesses over the coming six months? Well, my absolutely not expert from a from a you know clinical perspective, but from what I know as a traveler perspective, I think that internal tourism, so non international travel, but local travel, drive you know drive to destinations within a country, will start opening up again this year as soon as anyone can possibly make it happen safely, um, and that'll be where the entire tourism industry is focused for the, for the short term. Now in a place like the United States, I think that'll be further complicated state by state. So you're going to see hyper local, uh, travel becoming a thing, you know, reminds me of when we were in Kansas and, um, those ladies were writing a guidebook of what every little small town in Kansas had to offer. I, I have a feeling that the people of Kansas will be going to check those things out before they're flying to Paris, uh, for, for quite some time to come. And I think that's going to be a theme that we yeah. see all around the world. We had uh, we had dinner with them uh, and the mayor. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> right. Yes. The mayor. She made lots of food that I was allergic to. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> the Swedish smorgasbord that would kill Matt. Yes. <laughs> um, one of the other things that I've sort of observed is that when people are ready to travel, and maybe this is just me, maybe I'm biased towards vacation rental space, but I don't think people are going to be chomping at the bit to stay in a gigantic hotel or resort where there's a gazillion other people and elevator buttons and you know door handles. I just feel like a standalone vacation rental property uh, when done professional, so long as the perception is that is a professionally run business that's going to be clean and certainly COVID free. Uh, I feel like that we are positioned better than we have ever been coming out of this. You with me? Yeah, I'll buy that. I'm not selling it. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I think people are definitely going to be a little bit leery of high density operations with a lot of people floating around, a lot of people touching things. Um, I also think that in general, people are going to want to, especially people that have been cooped up in cities for months and stuff like that, are going to want to get out of town and go stay in a cabin in the woods somewhere. And that the vacation rental industry will get a little boost because it's going to be easier to rent a house. You might not even have to see anyone, you know, touch a keypad or something, disinfect it first, go in the house and you're good. Um, 
whereas a hotel is going to be a little bit more of a daunting experience. I don't know how long that'll last. I think there'll be some kind of midpoint where everyone's really worried and then people will forget about it again. But I definitely think uh, the vacation rental industry can get a little boost from that. Yeah, I agree. And I don't know if you've ever been to a hotel that has a um, digital key or virtual key. Yes. I've had about 50-50 experiences with them. Okay. Done the whole online check-in thing, check in through the app, get there, get to the door of the hotel room and try to unlock the door with the app. doesn't work. Have to go down to the front desk. And then I've also had it just work seamlessly, uh, which is pretty, pretty fun. So that may have a future as well. Yeah. I, I like that no touch world of tech. Um, of course, our sponsor for this podcast is Point Central, whose locks are digital, but you got to touch them. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, what about OTAs? Because I know you are a huge um, advocate of OTAs. You use them uh, like a good millennial. <laughs> the role, if you've been following over the last uh, few weeks, has been unusual because a lot of the OTAs have had to side with um, the guests in terms of refunds. And of course, this has um, pissed off hosts. They use this tor- term force majeure, which I am now using like anytime I break a promise, I'll just say <laughs> force majeure. Um, but <laughs> a company like Airbnb, a company like booking.com, when you as a traveler are booking through it, that's kind of the reason why you book through them, right? Because you don't want to have to fuss with an independent small business over your cancellation. Yeah. I don't know if this is relevant to the current conversation, but one of the things that I find with the OTAs is that as a traveler, and then people don't necessarily like hearing this at vacation rental conferences, but you know, if you're on Airbnb and you try to book a, a, a an apartment, and then the owner contacts you and says, you know, like please book outside of Airbnb, um, that often spooks the, the, the traveler. But uh, but the whole book direct movement and everything is like we're thinking about ways we can do this on the host side, right? But for for the traveler, that often feels weird. So I definitely think um, a lot of people are very comfortable interacting with va- vacation rentals through OTAs and not so comfortable uh, outside of that. And that's just something we have to deal with. The caveat here is that so many professional hosts in this in the past few weeks have been thrown under the bus. They're, they're so damaged, both their bottom line, their bank account, and their like heart has been so um, hurt by these companies that have really put universal rules in place that fly directly in the face of policies that were agreed to previously. I think we're going to start to see a lot of uh, lawsuits against these companies that tried this force majeure thing. And frankly, I think the the independent uh, business owners are going to win because it's just not... um, fair in the legal sense, in my opinion. Uh, But understanding that there's plenty of travelers that would prefer to use a site like booking.com or Airbnb than to go uh, the the long route around and make the direct booking, it does present our hosts with quite an uphill challenge. It's like, okay, you want the direct booking movement to, to grow, now's the time to show it. Like, how do we begin doing uh, all of the small business marketing techniques that we've been talking about for many years and consistently over and over again, that's hard for a small business. I mean, you you got your website for Mangofish uh, launched. Have you got any other um, vacation rental tools that you've been using in this promotional process? Uh, I mean, I've, I've listed with the OTAs uh, before in the past. I'm not, I don't have anything up at the moment because the the legalities of the current lockdown I mean we, we can't have any rentals at all. Um, I'm reviewing some different uh, PMS tools. I haven't made a decision yet, but um, oh, I'm nice. Look at you. I'm definitely with you. I think that anger at OTAs will drive, uh, you know, managers and hosts to pull out all the stops in terms of figuring out how to market their small businesses without OTAs. I think the good news too, is there's still enough of them. I mean, even if it's sort of three or four major players, there's still enough of them where you can take your money and your your hosting and your business and go to a different one, right? So if everyone's really angry at one of them and moves to another one, I, I do think that uh, the OTA will feel it if enough hosts do that. And then, you know, the other one, if they get complacent and they start screwing with hosts, the hosts can always move back. I mean, I think the important thing is 
there was all these feelings of uh, loyalty to a particular OTA or that they cared about you or, right. and, you know, at least we know that's done. <laughs> like you don't have to, you don't have to believe that anymore that you're not yeah. in some kind of, you know, <laughs> battle together with your OTA, but it's a marketing tool and a tool that gives you a certain, you know, it changes the way the guest perceives you perhaps a little bit of a trusted kind of escrow service for the money and a marketing tool. So you can choose whichever marketing tool you want to use. You can use all of them. You can use none of them. You can get off one of them for a while. You can let your anger be known. You can try to book direct as much as possible and just don't get too comfortable and don't get too loyal to any of them. You know, that would be yeah. my advice. Yeah. Sounds like you've been hanging around a lot of independent vacation rental business owners for the past <laughs> few years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of whom, uh, our, our peeps, the, 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 the professionals that you, you guys have met over the years, um, you think they're going to weather this storm? And if so, why? What makes you think that? And if not, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I do. I think most of them, um, I think a good cross section of the people we've filmed are kind of in their prime. Uh, they're still really enjoying the vacation rental business. They were actively growing the vacation rental business. And they were starting to make money with the vacation rental business. So I think they'll have a little bit of wherewithal. Some of the people we've, we've um, been to film are in destinations. I mean, I think of CJ in, in Blue Ridge, Georgia. You know, even if everything is dead and they're just scrambling for a few months, as soon as people can, they're going to start driving out of Atlanta and renting cabins in Blue Ridge. Somebody's going to have to rent them cabins. So, <laughs> Right. And and then the flip side of that would be someone like Bob in Le Marquet, Italy, a uh, very remote destination, almost exclusively fly to guests from other countries. I, I, I don't know what to think. I saw a post from Bob today, stay home so that I can go to Italy this summer. <laughs> They're really hoping that this season won't be destroyed and, and I don't blame them. I, I definitely think that's going to be tough. Um, mm -hmm. There might be some kind of parallel there to, you know, I imagine being out in the middle of nowhere, having only eight rooms, having a real loyal clientele, I think will help Bob and Ian. They've, they've built their repeat rates to an incredible, I think they're the highest repeat business rate we've ever seen just because people in the history of the vacation rental industry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would bet that people that Bob and Ian could get people in the UK to come hang out with them in London <laughs> and pay for it just to have the Bob <laughs> and Ian Le Marquet experience. Even if they're not in Italy, they, they're a very special case. They've got that down. Um, but, but for sure it's a challenge. You, you might, if they can get to Italy and they are in the property, I don't know. They might have to think maybe it's a time to renovate if they have the resources to do so. Maybe it's a time to reach out to Italians and try to promote some kind of local business um, to change the way they think about wh who they're renting to. I mean, they're, they're very just attracting holiday people. You know, down here, we're thinking about um, making a place that's geared towards like very specific kinds of creatives, trying to get people to come write books or make music albums or that kind of thing. Bob and Ian have the sort of facilities where they could cater to someone locally in Italy that might might work along those lines. I don't know. It's, it's a time where people are going to have to get really creative in those circumstances or there's definitely not going to be any revenue for a while. Yeah. I tend to think, and this kind of goes across all small business uh, niches, I think that the most agile thinkers, those who can really step, uh, take their hat off and step outside their body for a moment and kind of forget the way that things were done in the past and look at the, the future, look at what is an opportunity and adjust their business uh, in that way. I tend to think that those kinds of thinkers uh, sort of have the best shot at a, a place in this new future. Uh, and conversely, I think there's plenty of people who were, who are so stuck in the ways whose businesses were antiquated, who were just kind of going through the motions, weren't passionate about it anymore, certainly weren't ready to step outside the box and think creatively about new uh, demographics. I have a feeling that those folks are not interested in staying in sticking in this game. Don't you think? Yeah, I'll agree. I, I can think of a few uh, people I've met at conferences and stuff like that who even though you know the, the global economy was booming and a lot of people were traveling, so they were making money with their vacation rental business, but already when things were good, they were having issues, issues with employees, issues with guests, not really their heart wasn't in it. 
uh, you could tell, I, I think, and not super flexible in their thinking. I certainly agree with you that that kind of vacation rental host might not weather this storm. And, and it might be almost a, a relief or a blessing in disguise if it, it helps them find a different path in life that yeah, totally. That, that they weren't meant for. And I agree with you. That's, you know, the nimble thinkers. That's why I think somebody like Bob and Ian are going to be all right if they can convince a, the same British people to come book out their their cabin in, in Italy in a place where it's not necessarily the most popular destination in Italy every year, year in, year out. Uh, they're geniuses and they'll figure it out, whatever <laughs> whatever comes. I, I totally agree. Um, the... It does have a cleansing effect on probably all aspects of business, um, this kind of crisis. And um, there, there's definitely an, un, an unfair advantage some folks have, and it is that they are super passionate about it and they love it. And you'll know, I, I always end my presentation, whether it's a listing site in the independence keynote speech or a limited edition keynote speech, I always end it with approximately the same slide which is if you're doing all these things and if you're really into it, if you love it, it gives you the ability to fend off or at least sustain industry shifts and market changes. And it, I always just use those terms very broadly, but the coronavirus is pretty much exact, the most uh, perfect example of that. And the businesses that were not sustainable that were not limited edition, that were dependent on the OTAs or the businesses that weren't passionate about it, I don't think that they can sustain a blow compared to the folks who have this kind of unfair advantage, which is their, the reason that this industry is so special. So I'm staying very positive about our, about our peeps. Um, and at the very least, we will go visit them, right? Whether we are invited or not. Absolutely. Yeah. Just as soon as we can. I know. I think one of the interesting things about the vacation rental industry too is that I think some of the more successful businesses um, have managed to save some money or have cash flow coming in um, that might help them weather this downturn. I think one of the shocking things about this whole crisis has been learning that, you know, the pillars of American economy, airlines and stuff like that only have cash flow for three days to pay their employees or they have to go out of business. I, I, it strikes me that many of the vacation rental professionals I've met at conferences or I've gone to film um, have been very clever and, and certain things about the nature of the industry have helped them. So it's going to be very hard, very hard to keep the business afloat, very hard to keep paying employees. But I have a feeling that a good chunk of them are going to be able to weather the storm. And then as soon as bookings start coming in again and cash starts flowing again, they'll be right back on their feet again. So. Clever is a, is a great word for it. Um, and, and scrappy in a way. I mean, I've, I've found that even with my business, the way that I think right now, uh, I'm starting to think way more scrappy like I used to. I am not uh, complacent by any means. Hell, I have a beard right now that looks like yours and I smell Terrible. I haven't even taken a shower for like two days. That's how scrappy I am right now. I think the scrappiness, the cleverness, the the wiliness, the, the real entrepreneurial spirit that has made these folks successful in the pr first place, I think those are the ones who sustain this afterwards. And, and unfortunately, some of those colleagues may not be with us post-coronavirus, but um, I think they've certainly all got a shot. You excited about this season of the podcast? Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah? Good. I am too. When we start recording it, <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to just? Would, should this be the first episode? Sure. Why not? All right. And next episode, we'll get your partner, um, Tammy, on the call. Go through some other current events and and get people prepared for uh, full Tammy. What is it, Tammy? Uh, what's her new Instagram name? <laughs> Tam o'clock. Tam o'clock. Get people ready for Tam o'clock. <laughs> 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 All right. See you, Stewie. All right. Well, it's great talking to you. Have a good day. You too.